Well, good afternoon. I've been testing out the uh, new TC06 trail camera from Cam Park for the last three weeks and really giving it a torture test and having a lot of fun with it. And uh, one of the two things that really stand out are obviously it has two cameras. It has a, a one-third inch CMOS sensor for improved uh, daytime and nighttime IR uh, pictures. In fact, it has some of the clearest uh, and most striking video of any trail camera I've ever tested. And it also has a starlight lens for at nighttime, uh, especially at dusk and dawn in those times when the full moon might be out, where you can get a better chance of getting color imagery at night. So that is a big uh, breakthrough, and you might start to see more cameras with dual lenses in the future. It also has a sophisticated uh, adjustment of the IR lights, depending on uh, whether how many, how many lights are needed in the situation. I'll show some examples of that starlight. It's pretty cool. Here are two examples of the starlight feature. This shows a rabbit in color, which would normally be an IR black and white in the pre-dawn hours. And here we see a raccoon at dusk, which would normally be an IR, but it's in nice, rich color. This is a function of the uh, new starlight lens. But probably the most uh, exciting thing to me, beyond of course the improved video, is that it has outstanding sound quality. And I'll be uh, showing some examples of that as we go along. I mean, it's nice to get good videos and good pictures, but really when you're telling a story with uh, animals and birds and such out in nature, the sound is really uh, important to tell the whole story. And this thing has great sound. It's got me kind of fired up. So we're going to look at it today and uh, you know I don't uh, buy batteries anymore hardly at all I mean you put eight batteries in here to get started but after that I'm going solar in the trail cameras because I use solar cameras all the time and you know I used to buy like 48 packs of AA batteries on Amazon which are a pretty good price but uh, nowadays I just go solar and their camp park makes a good solar uh, uh, cell for uh, trail cameras that uh, fits right in there. There's a number of other companies that make solar panels that you have to use adapters. I've had a little problems with the adapters sometimes if you're out and if they're out sitting outside for a while they might get a little corrosion on them or something and uh, might not make good contact but uh, this one just plugs right in without an adapter. So that's one thing they can think about if you don't if you don't go with a uh, solar panel that perfectly matches the camera. Sometimes you have to use an adapter. Sometimes that adapter introduces some issues with uh, good contacts. Anyway, let's talk about the camera. It's pretty uh, exciting if you've used Cam Park before. It's very similar to the Cam Park T100 or any number of uh, Cam Park uh, cameras out there. What you've come to expect is a nice, uh, fairly light, uh, fairly compact design. And it has a lock here and uh, place for a belt and also a locking cable on the back. Of course it has a tripod mount. And this one you load the batteries from the inside instead of a drawer that uh, pops out, which I prefer. It uses eight AA batteries like they all do. And here, I start out with eight, you have to start out with batteries, so I put in eight Amazon AA batteries and then from then on I'm using a, a, a power pack. The other thing that's nice about this camera is it uses a regular S-sized SD card. And uh, you know, I really like these cards a lot better than the micro SD cards. It's so difficult to get the micro SD cards in and out of the camera when you're out in the field. And more than once I've popped one <laughs> out into the, into the forest floor and had to look for it. Uh, so I just prefer you know, the standard size SD card. And if you have a micro SD card, you usually come with a, a standard sized, uh, you know, holder for it anyway, so it's no big deal. So the layout of this camera is pretty much identical to a lot of other Cam Parks. I, I really love the Cam Park uh, T100. It's really been a good camera. I have three of them that I've used uh, for over a year now. A couple of them are down in a uh, stream bed where it actually gets pretty wet and they've held up pretty well to pretty uh, abusive use. Uh, so it's set up pretty much like the T100, the T86, 
Uh, it's pretty good classic uh, setup and uh, you turn the setup on and it's pretty much uh, the same as uh, most of the other camp parks. The menu is uh, a little, you go through here and you've got your mode, uh, photo video and photo plus video. It might be nice you think to take a photo plus video and I do that sometimes but you got to remember that when you take a photo plus video if you're primarily interested in video that for however many photos you take, one or up to ten I think you can take, whatever photos you take before you take the video is just going to delay uh, you know your video so that's something to think about but it's also nice sometimes to use that but I almost always use just video. PR interval can be set to, to the minimum is uh, ten seconds and I always set it at that because I don't want to miss anything. IR sensitivity, I almost always set that to high. It just kind of depends on what you're using it for. Time lapse is, uh, you can, I don't use that too much, but if you wanted to set this up and cover an area for a long period of time and take a series of pictures like a construction or uh, changing seasons or things like that, that's one way to do it. And uh, time lapse is uh, easy to set up. I've done that before. Uh, night shoot mode. This is where the uh, Starlight Extra uh, camera, there's actually two cameras in here controlled by the software. And you can leave it to auto in which the camera will decide. Or you can uh, set it up to have more, you know, more force it to shoot more color. And you might, you know, that's, that's, that's uh, something, if, especially if you want to try and get more uh, color imagery at night. Uh, especially around dusk and dawn. There's usually a period when this before the sun comes up and after the sun goes down There's a period where the uh, trail cameras switch over from uh, normal daylight mode to uh, IR mode and You know that switch over you know when you use when you say the more color what I found in a couple of examples is you can extend the color filming a little bit further into the evening or earlier into the morning And then the LEDs, uh, you can leave that to uh, auto. But if you're going to do close-ups, uh, like you know, close-up videos uh, at night, you might want to drop that down to low. Uh, battery night shot, you have your choice of either saying when the battery gets low, it just doesn't light or no shutting. And bottom line is, if you're uh, in a situation at night and you're shooting a lot of video, and I've had cases where I've had an animal on the... Uh, camera that'll sit there for you know a long periods of time and run continuous video that will run your battery down there's no doubt about running video at night it'll run down your battery uh, and so what'll happen is it'll just turn dark at night and uh, if that happens there's nothing wrong with the camera it's just that there's not enough battery power to uh, keep the lights going that's why I always recommend having this because this will pretty much get it through uh, you know get any camera through the night uh, if you know if you're shooting a lot of video, you just can't depend on the AA batteries. It's not a problem with the camera, it's just the nature of the beast. Get yourself a solar pack and keep it charged up. And monitoring period, you can pick specific periods if you want to monitor uh, only at night or only in the daytime or only at a specific time. Side, uh, you're basically, in, you know, if you want to get the best chance of getting a good shot, you always want that side on. I'll show some examples of this has a, a really fast trigger, trigger speed of 0.1 seconds, so that's kind of exciting. You can really uh, click on the uh, trigger, you can really trigger on the uh, uh, animals coming into the area quickly. Here with the side sensors on and that 0.1 second trigger speed, you can see that this raccoon that just entered from the far right immediately triggered the uh, camera to take a f video. You can see the raccoon well before he becomes in the center of the camera. Here's another photo that just shows the uh, cat just beginning to come into the right side of the frame and trigger the uh, camera. And then you move over to the uh, picture and you have your image size. And you have a, because you have two cameras, you have a night, daytime and a nighttime size, which is kind of nice. Uh, obviously in daytime there's no sense in not going uh, this maximum uh, because it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. Uh, but if you're going to leave it out for weeks at a time, then you might want to lower that. And uh, 
The other thing is it has a real improved CMOS sensor, a one-third inch CMOS sensor, which is pretty big for a uh, trail camera. And then nighttime, you can set the maximum of eight megabytes at night. You always want the highest resolution imagery you can get, so when you crop and zoom in, you can get detail, such as this great close-up of raccoon front paws and claws. Picture number, if you want to take just photographs and not videos, you might as well uh, go to the maximum burst of 10 photos. Because most times animals are moving pretty quick. I'm keeping it at one photo because I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm mostly shooting video, although I did practice with the uh, pictures and got some great pictures. Shutter speed, maximum one, th one thirtieth of a second, that's what you want. And of course your shutter speed is what's going to limit, you know, your ability to freeze motion with a picture. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. One thirtieth of a second is not super fast, but it's pretty fast, but you're going to get motion burr sometimes with that. Move over to the uh, video setting and uh, daytime, I always keep it at 4K P30. Nighttime maximum is 1080 P30 and that's where I keep it. Always filming at the highest 4K resolution allows you to crop and zoom way in for amazing details in your videos like this. Video length, the nice thing about this is you can set it from, I think, 10 seconds up to three minutes. And uh, I usually run it in the vicinity of a minute or a minute and a half. And record audio, you always want that on. And, and audio to me is very important to tell a story. The audio with this particular trail camera is just spectacular. And then the overall setting uh, language, go back to the default settings, uh, format. You always want to format your SD card and you want to use a high quality SD card especially if you're shooting 4K video and you want to format it and uh, before you, uh, uh, you know, use it, especially for the first time. Date time and time format, no big deal there. Date stamp, generally I have that on when I'm testing, but when I'm actually, uh, you know, producing videos for my YouTube channel, I generally want the date stamp off there because it's just something that clutters up, uh, it just kind of depends. Uh, beep sound, if you're outside, I tend to turn that um, off. It, uh, you know, you get used to using these. It, it can be a little annoying after a while. It's just up to you. You can give your camera a name and you can set a special password. Bluetooth, you always want to be on because Bluetooth is what wakes up the uh, Wi-Fi connection. And I'll go through the Wi-Fi connection uh, shortly. Wi-Fi SID is this TC06. Wi-Fi password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can change that and you may want to change that because obviously, um, you know, everybody that has a trail camera knows that they come with that setting. And auto Wi-Fi off, uh, you just leave that at one minute. Auto power off three minutes and backlight one minute. Those are all power saving strategies. If there's ever a firmware update, you can uh, put the new firmware on a disc and, and turn it on and you'll get a firmware update. So that's the menu, and now uh, what I'll do is um, turn this to on. And when you turn it on, you get a countdown to five. And the camera is on, so we're going to close it up. And then I'll go through the Wi-Fi settings. The manuals have come a long way over the years with a lot of these trail cameras, and Cam Park's uh, manual is pretty clear and easy to understand. There's a uh, link to either uh, iOS or Android to get the uh, Game Camera Pro 2 Android uh, app, for in my case, uh, to load it so you can communicate with the camera. And uh, I'll just demonstrate that now. You go to the Game Pro Cam uh, 2 app, the app loads up, turn on the Bluetooth, allow, and it's going to scan and you'll see I'm picking up two cameras because I have another camera running out there one of them the T200 is out there uh, watching the uh, raccoon uh, <laughs> the raccoon mother raccoons nest up in a tree and the T200 uh, is a good camera too 
And the T-300 actually is outside, outside of the house, about 60, 70 feet away, and it's picking up on the Wi-Fi. Basically, around there, yeah, around 50, 60 feet is your uh, limit of picking up. I'll turn on the Wi-Fi. Connect up to T-06. Go back to the GamePro 2 app. You'll get a green light. So in the app you can see what the camera is seeing and you use it to set it up the way you want it, which I use all the time. You want to make sure that you got the area covered that you want to cover. Uh, you get your battery uh, setting and then you can go through the settings on the uh, app just like you can in the camera. I won't repeat all of it, but it's basically you can control the uh, settings through the app. And you can also review what you have on here see some of the videos of the crows that I've been taking so you can review all the videos that are on your camera and decide if you want to swap out the disc or just uh, leave it go and see how it's working make sure it's triggering so you get a good idea uh, what it is now then you just go back to the main menu and exit now you can also control the camera here you know that's the other thing i was talking about you can make a video i believe you can take a video fairly lengthy so you can see what's going on in here and you can uh, either take a picture which would be like that take pic succeeded or you can take a video which will take the video the way you have it set up and you can take a video and it'll run for, uh, I believe it'll run at this mode for up to 29 minutes or until you run out of batteries, <laughs> which is another reason to always carry the uh, solar power unit. So we'll stop that, exit out of the app, and there you have it. I wanted to show you one other quick hack if you want to know how I get some of these spectacular videos, uh, especially the... Uh, eye level view of uh, various animals and birds simple matter of having a portable trail camera mount this is a uh, real heavy duty 2 by 8 treated lumber I've got a uh, tripod uh, screw here and then I've got one of the Cam Park uh, mounting brackets here you just mount your camera here set it wherever you want to set it good idea to have a little rock or a small you know brick you set this down and wherever you want, you set a little weight on there and you've got it. You pick it up and you go. In fact, I carry this with me all the time. If I see something interesting, I'll put it down. Uh, you know, just a little bit of weight here, usually a rock or something or even just some, whatever, just to hold it down. But it's a pretty heavy piece of wood. And that's where I get all those eye level, kind of uh, pretty amazing sometimes videos. Now, sometimes your camera is going to get abused. I've had an elk step on the camera and destroy it. And as you saw, you'll see the raccoons and some of the bigger animals will regularly be running through the woods and run into it. The cameras are generally held up well. If you're going to get good video, you have to be a little resourceful and you have to expect sometime that you're going to lose a camera to the creatures that you're trying to uh, film when you're down on the ground level like that. But this is the secret right here. So yeah, the, the, this is just a great camera. You got two cameras. Uh, to improve uh, your uh, ability to see things in color at night and to have two different resolutions for night and day. The CMOS sensor on the camera is awesome. You'll see some great examples of how clear and uh, color true the video is. And the microphone is just a breakthrough for me. I love the sound. And this is going to be my new go-to camera, especially in an application where I know I want to get the good sound.